Hello everyone, and welcome back to A Mid-Evil, where today we're going to be playing Episode 3, The Sacred Path. Immediately falling down into a hole, but the hole brings us back up again. There is some green mana there, though, that I would like to have. And also, the Star of Torment, which I'm gonna try to actually call the Star of Torment this time, instead of the Celestial Claw. Repeatedly. <laughs> we'll see if I actually manage to do it, but we'll get around to that. Here is our first secret area. It is a full orange mana, but I'm actually going to leave it there because I mentioned earlier that there was an award for clearing the level with max mana. There isn't actually an award, it's just an achievement, but this is a level where you can do it, so might as well try to get that out of the way. Here is a message that says the journeyman's way leads to the apostle's shrine. And we'll probably get more about that later. For now, we're gonna go in this direction and meet our first new enemy type. It is the Golems. They are weak against the Celestial Claw. So we're actually gonna be using it a little bit more this chapter, which is nice, because there is a fair amount of them. Next enemy is the Fire Elemental. Shoots ranged attacks, fairly irritating, and they die. Eh, kind of slowly, honestly, so they are a force to be reckoned with at times. And then there is the Vine Creatures, which if they touch fire, they actually become one of the fire elementals as well. So, all in all, uh, just a whole bunch of nuisances. There's a bunch of different ways that they can turn into fire elementals as well. Like, they can touch these lava on the floor type areas, but occasionally there's also just a flame that they can touch and they'll just turn into an elemental as well. If another fire elemental shoots them, they will also turn into one, uh, but fortunately the vine creatures themselves die fairly quickly against the axe. It's a little tricky to kill them with the axe without taking damage, like you need to time walking backwards surprisingly okay, but fortunately they don't deal that much damage, so it's not that big of a deal at the end of the day. Also, even without that full orange mana, we're gonna have plenty of mana to go around. So all in all, I'm not particularly worried about what we're going to be facing here. Occasionally, the vine creatures will also be on the ceiling, just waiting for you. I'm not sure. We might be able to see that there. Looked like that one just teleported from there to there, but don't worry about it. <laughs> it's probably fine. Find the gold key to ascend. That's exactly what we're going to do. But first, let's press this switch. It will lower the bridge, which is part one. The golden key door is right there, so we're gonna have to get ourselves a golden key over here. Now, the golden key is down here. There, it's just waiting for us. Also, there is a total of four destructibles on this level, so might as well try to go for those as well. And we're just gonna explore around here a bit. Here's a switch that we can't currently press. If we go here, it says three switches to reveal the key. Which gives you a little bit of a hint about what we're supposed to be doing here. Not much else we can do here right now, so let's go upstairs to find some switches. There's two places we can go upstairs. I'm going to take this one because uh, it just lines up a little bit better with killing all the enemies and going into the right direction. Walking here will spawn a whole bunch of stuff, as you can see, including one enemy in the bottom next to that switch right there. So be somewhat careful of that because that one can shoot up and deal a little bit of damage. There was a switch there, we'll be pressing it later for now though. We are just gonna go further upwards, grab some orange mana and just jump side to side. So the golems, they're actually invulnerable when they come out. It takes a second before they become vulnerable. Uh, so if you shoot them immediately, they'll just always survive it. But they should always die to a single planet in the face, which is wonderful. Also, a thing to keep in mind is the places where the golems come from tends to block off some mana or stuff like that. So it's almost always worthwhile to just check out where they came from to see if there's any hidden goodies waiting for you behind them. Especially when not picking up a secret full orange mana, because that is obviously very useful. This says the protectors cannot stand weapon of chaos. If we look at the text a little closer, it actually says uh, the protectors weak planet which uh, is a little bit more straightforward what it means, but also if we go to the Codex, go to the Weapons section, and go to the Celestial Claw, it actually says it was created by the Archmage of Chaos, which is a little bit more of a hint that you should kill those golems with rockets. Works fairly well. One more switch to go. If we jump down here, we should be able to get back onto that walkway where the other switch was, because it's hidden behind a wall. 
but we can jump down from here. Press that final switch. This will uh, make a whole bunch of golems go into your direction. But again, if you avoid the rocks at least slightly, which is what I didn't, <laughs> but you shoot planets at them, uh, no worries there at all. There's also the Voltri, there is some text that says those who are lost never look upwards, which I think is just meant to hint the second switch, which is further upwards. The text itself it says it a little bit differently, but overall the message is brought a similar way. And there is two more destructibles, one over here and one on the other side. But because we have cleared the sequence, we can now press this switch, and if you're quick enough, you can get back onto the platform, which is surprisingly tricky to do quick enough. Like, I think you actually need to run into the wall and then run back again, so you don't get slowed down from turning directions. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't matter too much. It's just for a secret health pickup. You can also just run up. You can also just rocket jump onto the platform afterwards. But there is some secret health here. And all the way below the platform is the golden key that we spoke of previously. Picking up the golden key spawns a bunch of vine creatures, but I'm not particularly concerned. We now have soul power, which is lovely. And let's leave this place with golden key in hand. Soul power is just really nice to have for the next fight as well. Uh, it is down here. We'll be going into this door in just a second because the rest of the way forward is blocked off by a big pillar. But there is also this message right here, which says by dusk only $20 on Steam, which is an optional message, but ultimately one with some very important knowledge on it. So definitely do recommend it. Dusk is a very good game. <laughs> but let's move on back onto the bridge into the golden key door. And where we get our sword, and sword plus soul power equals a good time. It does work very well against these golems, especially in this room, I feel. Uh, just because there is a bunch of enemies that you're just shooting continuously, as you can hear from the sound of my projectile just hitting enemies repeatedly. <laughs> especially just a couple up there, they can be rather tricky to deal with otherwise. And if you run out of soul power, there is, of course, still some more rockets that you can throw at enemies as well. But overall really like having soul power for this room. It really simplifies specifically just those enemies that are all the way up top there because uh, they are just shooting down at you repeatedly otherwise. Silver key over here. We can find the way is clear yet murky, but if we press this, it'll lower the pillar all the way down and we can move onwards in that direction. There is another message right here. Fire makes divine creatures stronger, which implies that they turn into the fire elementals that we saw earlier. And uh, with that, we can move back down to where we came from. It opens some bars, it allows some vine creatures to attack you. But since we are all the way down here, we can touch this wall right here. Easy to miss secret, but it's there. It gives you a mana boost, which gives you a little bit of mana for all of your weapons. And the mana boost is quite good. It's really one of the reasons why we can even get enough mana for the achievement at the end of the day. Uh, because in warrior mode, you do not carry your mana with you to the next episode, of course. Uh, so it is, uh, there's only really some specific levels where you can get max ammo without it being very tedious. <laughs> but fortunately, this is one of them. And possibly one of the easier ones, I would say. The Azure Orb awaits us here. Works very well against the fire elementals as well. And we'll probably be seeing that later. Couple more vine creatures here, but nothing that I am particularly concerned about. And a little bit of axing away, and before you know it, all your troubles are destroyed. The protectors lie in wait for those that would traverse the sacred path, and that's true, because if we press this switch, suddenly there's three golems trying to destroy you. But again, we have plenty of mana to go around. Uh, this says the path is before you. You must ascend. We'll do that. There's some blue mana there if you want it. I do not. There's some health here with some mana underneath it as well. And that's what we will be going to next. It's a little bit of a secret area, but certainly not impossible to find, especially with the hint given. One of them just turned into a fire elemental because he got shot by the one behind him. That does happen from time to time. <laughs> Certainly something to look out for. But yeah, the mana was roughly down there. There is a hole over there as well. If you mess this jump up, you die. If you fall down there, it's just death. But if you manage to jump, there is plenty of mana to go around as well. 
You can go here a little bit earlier, but you don't really need to. Uh, this door only opens from this side, and it brings you back to a place that we were previously. And with all of that in hand, we can go back to the bridge where we came from. Uh, over there. <laughs> and hopefully there's some enemies on the other side here. There is not. There. This is... Uh, a thing that happens if you go for that secret in, in kind of that way, because you end up not crossing this bridge properly, which ends up not spawning some fire elementals at the end of it. So that's kind of missable, but it's definitely easy to fix afterwards if you know very specifically what you're doing. <laughs> uh, but if you don't know what you're doing, then obviously it becomes a little bit more tedious, because uh, you're going to have to guess that you're going to have to cross that bridge. But certainly... Something to keep in mind, I suppose. And it might make the level a little bit easier if you don't have to deal with the enemies, so that's nice. Moving on, though. Over there is a flight pickup. It is required for a secret, probably. You might be able to plan a jump to it, actually, but I have not tried. <laughs> it's, it would definitely be very, very fiddly to try and plan a jump that, at least. I'm going to try to actually not have soul mode active here just yet. Uh, everyone look away. Okay, let's just... Uh, do this a little bit differently with the soul power that we have right now We're just not gonna jump into that hole that we just created and we're just gonna clear up this place as quickly as we can And then we'll just go back to the hole a little bit later There we go. Very nice Having soul power for this bridge specifically is just it's not bad <laughs> It's not bad at all. So uh, I do not mind that so I did mention the flight pickup We'll be picking that up a little bit later because uh, Mostly just for the purposes of being able to grab that full orange mana and then be able to backtrack a little bit quicker later. So that's what we're going to do. Grab the ribbons that were hidden in the hole. We're not really going to be using it this level because, again, there's only so much purple mana to go around. But there is just enough for me to do what I want to do, so that's nice. I also don't mind the uh, soul power running out there because it takes a while to reach the next enemy anyway. Over here... Some more purple mana. Uh, let's go over this side because it makes the messages read a little better. The giant protects the way. And we are just going to run forward and summon everything because it makes this fight a little bit more uh, just nicer. There's the giant. If you shoot five planets at him, he dies. Uh, and because we ran all the way forward, there's going to be a lot of enemies there now. <laughs> I uh, may have missed one of my rockets, or maybe just not shot at the right time there. Uh, but be a little careful, and just shoot a whole bunch of planets in that direction, and before you know it, the whole room is dead. And yeah, it just makes the fight a little bit nicer, really. That's really the main reason to summon everything, because you can take that fight a lot slower. There was some health hidden behind the giant as well. But definitely don't mind doing it like that at all. Let's pick up all of this. Very nice. Almost got our soul mode back again. There is mana inside each of these little crevices that the golems were coming from as well. But again, I'm just going to leave that for later in case we need it at the very end. Uh, there is one message hidden away over here. I worry about the pilgrim. Something is not right. We'll be figuring, about, uh, figuring out more about that later. But first... We are just going to go all the way around. This is specifically for a secret area. There is a little walkway bringing you to this purple mana. And then the secret is behind that red wall right there. Again, a red wall with a secret behind it. It takes you to this wonderful maze. <laughs> uh, well, oh God, I briefly, I may have forgotten where to go. That's fine, though. It's There's nothing dangerous inside this maze. Ultimately, it's just for the Call Ardwolf Say Apogee uh, triangle, which you can pick up and you'll get the two obscure uh, text at the top and an achievement for it normally as well. So this is a reference to Episode 2, Mission 8 of Wolfenstein 3D, where there is possibly the worst maze ever put in a video game. Uh, that you have to traverse through. This is nothing that's quite as terrible as it. This is just a mere shell <laughs> of the horror that you're facing through in that one, including to the point where you can just get completely stuck in it, I believe, uh, in terms of actually reaching that little message. But it used to say, um, uh, call Apogee, say Ardwolf for a competition. 
And that's where my knowledge about the subject ends, because it is, uh, it's a fairly old reference. <laughs> but, you know, it's a nice little secret area, ultimately. Over here, a couple more vine creatures, which we're just gonna very easily take care of, I'm hoping. I'm trying once again to not quite get soul power here. Uh, so let's just try and avoid these souls. Because it's kind of nice to have soul power a little later. Read this message now, because later on this door is going to open and then you won't be able to read it anymore. And, uh, that's a problem. <laughs> and, um, let's go over here. If we go on this direction, there's going to be one, another one of these big golems. They do have a tendency to stagger when you shoot them. Makes them a little bit less dangerous. Uh, please don't pick up the soul. Very good. And another one right here. Uh, there's buttons on either side of this place as well. And pressing the buttons will open up a door. Picking up the last soul now for some more soul power. And now we're just going to run into this room. Press the switch, which once again is going to summon a whole bunch of golems. And we're just going to shoot two suns at them and kill basically everyone. <laughs> I think uh, there is an achievement for killing... X amount of enemies with one sun or something like that, and honestly, that's a pretty good place to do it. Can't really go wrong there, and it is wonderful. So that opens up the door. We are still missing one secret and one message. We did get all the kills, so that's wonderful. The secret and message we'll be getting to right now, uh, but mostly backtracking to get our mana all the way topped up. There we go. We are currently missing a whole bunch of uh, orange mana and a little bit of purple, which we're all just gonna pick up right now. There is also a message right here. This evil is too strong, I must make it to the haven. And once again, we'll talk about what this message is about a little bit later. But let's jump down here. Uh, go all the way back to the orange mana that we didn't pick up at the very start of the level. Which is right here. We did trigger the secret, so at least there was no worry of that. If you, if you fall down there, you'll just end up uh, in this passageway right here, but you can avoid it. And with that, we're going to take the elevator that we created at the start of the level here to go back on top of the bridge. The fire pickup, or the flight pickup even, you can pick it up without rocket jumping. There is a platform over here that you can jump on, and from there, it's not too difficult of a jump in to the point where this is probably the first time where I failed it. <laughs> uh, but if you just jump off the very edge there, we can reach this flight pickup. It allows you to reach the purpleness that is right here with some purple mana. And with this flight, we can also very easily go back all the way to the top where we finish the level in a minute. So right now we have full purple full green, full orange, and full blue mana. And with that, we are just going to leave this level. You really do keep flight for quite a while if you just uh, grab it at the very end there. <laughs> Didn't expect to be able to fly that much, but fair enough, it worked out. And uh, unfortunately, there's no award to show it, so just uh, believe in your mind's eye that there is an achievement popping up here, but that's all there is. That br concludes level one. Let us go to episode three, mission two. The Apostle Shrine, where we immediately are going to get the Celestial Claw and fight some golems with it. It still works very well. We do not have a whole bunch of ammo for it, though, but fortunately, uh, our problems will be swayed when we reach this message. Uh, the Apostle Shrine is a test of skill and a legendary soul, which the Axe's soul power works fairly well against these golems because they are just going to get staggered. Uh, there is the Star of Whatnot over there. Uh, whomsoever you want to call it. There is an Acid Plant there, which I believe has the same name as the final boss of Quake. A fun little bit of trivia for you there. And over here it says the key is to look. Which is very true, because over here there is a secret area with an invisibility power-up. But in this instance I'm not going to take it, because getting all kills... Uh, becomes a little bit more troublesome with that because there's a lot of enemies on the ceiling and they don't come down when you are invisible. <laughs> so uh, we're just not going to take that because otherwise we're just going to have to backtrack without invisibility later and it's, uh, it's just a hassle ultimately so I don't want to deal with it. 
couple of enemies here, but nothing too scary to deal with. Not really concerned about health at all for the same reason I'm uh, never concerned about health, which is there is going to be a full health pickup here very soon. It's hidden in an area that's not technically a secret area, but it is very well hidden, so very easily missable. Uh, there's the sword. There is also a secret area in this place, but I'll get that in a little bit. Pressing this switch is going to drop that and also show a new enemy type, which is flamethrower heads. And they have one particular nuisance about them, which is simultaneously also kind of amusing. Uh, the flamethrower is also kind of unfortunate, I suppose, uh, because it shoots flames. But yeah, there's one particular nuisance about them that I will get back to you on in uh, level three here, so just ignore that for now. There is a mana boost waiting for us over here. There should be another one of those heads, I do believe. There we go. And a fourth one as well. There we are. And uh, yeah, I'll build. those enemies are not going anywhere. So let's quickly grab that full health pickup that I was talking about a second ago. It is hidden behind this wall. Not a secret area, strangely enough, but very difficult to see. <laughs> Very easy to miss for sure. But jumping down with that full health, there should be a couple of friends waiting for us. One of them just turned into a flame creature. Uh, more of them are... God, this one is really just summoning all of them. <laughs> yeah, actually managed to hit just about all of them there. That's pretty impressive. But that does happen. Some more orange mana. Some more vines. Nothing to worry about. Plenty of mana to go around here. We could use a sword some more, but honestly, the axe works so well. Full green mana. Occasionally, there is some souls waiting for you in the water here. I'm genuinely not sure why. I think maybe you can just drop this block on some enemies or something like that. But occasionally, there's souls there. And I'm, yeah, I haven't really figured out why that is, but I'm not going to question it too much. This passageway right here is a method of backtracking, but there is also a couple of enemies here. There's going to be a message up there. There is a, a vault ride waiting for us, which I don't love in this chapter, but you know, it's a weapon. The visage of fire is not to be trifled with. That probably means something to someone, but this button allows you to go back to where you came from. If you so desire, I suppose maybe the invisibility power-up could be useful uh, in this upcoming area if you are particularly concerned about an enemy type that we haven't seen yet. Which is fish. Uh, they are right there. Uh, they just bite. They don't really do that much. They're not they're not the scariest fish I've ever seen in a video game, and quite honestly, I don't mind it. <laughs> I've seen some very scary fish in first-person shooters, and this one's fine. This one just tries to nibble on you a bit, and it, it's not too harmful, so that's nice. Uh, we are just about to reach soul power here, and I genuinely... I There probably is a good way to use soul power in this chapter. I personally haven't really found it. Uh, next to that, there is also... A legendary soul in the water here uh, right there <laughs> it is uh, technically hidden it is a secret area at the end of the day but genuinely I struggle to find good places to use soul power in this chapter in particular and I'm not really sure why it's usually quite useful but in this one uh, it's tricky over here we can go up into the next area I believe you can actually see a little bit of a hint on where you're supposed to go in that area as well because over here you can actually see the golden key hidden inside the water as well so with that information in mind we are indeed going to go back up again in to the non-water there is a message on the wall here somewhere it's on the other side it's a message that I have a tendency to forget about so I'm just gonna actively look for it right now it's right here the reflection of water only shows the surface. Very true. Very well. Very wise. And let's jump in here to get the golden key. This will probably summon a bunch of more enemies, right? Yeah. And with all those enemies summoned, we're just gonna start shooting. Destroy all of them with relative ease. There we go. And maybe we can use the soul power for a little bit more. Maybe we can get like one sword swing off here. Yeah, actually, this is not too bad. Yeah, that 
that worked fairly well, because those uh, acid plants are actually fairly durable as well. They take like three hits from the Star Torment to kill, and being able to kill them like this is actually not that bad. So, yeah, fair enough. I guess if you just keep the enemies alive for a while, it's not the worst way to use that soul power. Over here is a message. I must escape the darkness. Again, yeah, in the next chapter all will be revealed, but for now, we're just gonna keep it a mystery. These heads, I do really like using the Star of Torment on, but again... Uh, you may actually be able to guess what my problem is <laughs> with these enemies. And it has everything to do with how they just keep flying when they die uh, to the Star of Torment. But let's go over here. The pure soul is like water. It's very true. There's a couple of fire elementals here. We are just gonna shoot them with our Azure Orb. There is some water you can jump down in here. It's surprisingly tricky to get back out of it if you're actually in the water because this lift raises just a little bit quicker than you're ordinarily able to leave water in this game. <laughs> it's possible for sure. Like you can jump out of it and jump on top of the platform. But it already goes up when you're hitting the side of it, and it's really a problem. <laughs> it's a strange one, but it's there. It's, uh, it's a nuisance. But if you just avoid the water entirely, uh, then there is no worries at all. Let's grab as much blue mana as we can before we press this switch. That should create some more vine creatures for us to destroy. Very nice. Very good. No concerns whatsoever. We have an axe, and it honestly works very well against a fair amount of these enemies. You can probably honestly use it against most of the golems as well if you really want to. Uh, I mean, we've seen it with Soul Power active, and it still was quite effective. It's mostly scary to use against the flying flamethrower heads, I suppose. The cistern is right here. And we're just gonna keep shooting everyone with the Star of Torment because it kills them in two hits and that's just very good. There is also one Fire Elemental down there. And there's some more fish. But the fish are surprisingly weak to this water-based weapon, so no worries at all. There is some health in the water there in case you need it. Also some more blue mana, specifically for me. And there is a, a tiny jumping puzzle. There is uh, something that actually uses the mechanic of being able to jump higher while the elevator is going up to try and hit some switches. Not too difficult if you know that mechanic's there. Probably... Mm, is it? Eh, yeah. <laughs> if you jump at the very end there, you could probably make it, but nah. No worries. We're just gonna grab the ribbons there, though. In this chapter, we uh, probably are actually going to use it as well because we are not trying to keep full mana. Now that we've pressed all those switches, the water is raised and we can take this up. I did say I was going to use the ribbons, but over here is going to be just one big golem. And honestly, the, the, the planets just work so well. We just destroyed the Earth again. That does happen. I'm curious if we can make it happen every chapter. <laughs> but this one in particular, you end up using the Celestial Claw so much that, yeah, there's a, a pretty high chance that it's going to happen, ultimately. Don't really need to get this orange mana, but, you know, it's there. With that, though, we have soul power, so let's see if we can use it to our most effectiveness. Let's uh, actually just throw a black hole here, because there is a lot of these vine creatures. There's probably an achievement for doing specifically that right there. <laughs> there should... Huh... I was gonna say there should be some fish here, but did the black hole actually kill those as well? Also, one thing I never actually mentioned is that you can run into the black hole and then you'll just insta-die as well, so be careful of that. There is also a cool effect if you walk near one, which I should actually do at some point, because it does look quite cool. But with that in mind, I guess we killed some fish from a distance. There is a full health pickup over there, and quite frankly, I'm barely missing health, but we're gonna go for it anyway, because... Uh, it's there in it, and it's a secret area. A uh, little platform to take you up here. There's a purple mana all the way at the end there. I don't care. We're gonna go in this direction. Because we got plenty of purple mana. I mean, we got plenty of health as well, and I'm going for this, but yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? I don't really want to go back for it later. There we go. That worked out. Couple more vine creatures coming up ahead. No worries whatsoever. I specifically have a thing in my notes. About this next section, which 
genuinely just say walk right uh, <laughs> because I always I frequently forget about this secret area. It doesn't help. It, I'm already a full blue bad. I don't know what to do with it, but yeah, it's there. Walking a little bit further forward though, the heads come out a swinging. Uh, please be a little nicer to my health, but other than that, very good. Couple more vine creatures, another big golem, which we're just gonna shoot wildly at and hope that occasionally we're gonna hit him without destroying vine creatures. <laughs> but it's working out. Couple of shots in the leg is all you need. And it's all good to go. Couple more orange mana pickups here as well, so before you know it, we're gonna be all back to action again. It's wonderful. Don't really, uh, I don't really have strong feelings about these big golems. They die very quickly and they don't do much if you know how to deal with them. If you don't know how to deal with them, they do throw big rocks that move you all over the place and it can be kind of scary, but yeah, Celestial Claw, it works very well. It's a very powerful weapon, specifically here. Speaking of which, there is uh, just a bunch of enemies here and we're just gonna destroy all of them. <laughs> he actually survived, wow. The golem actually survived the hit from the purple. That is a rare one to see, but fair enough, I suppose. Pressing the switch is going to create some more heads as well. But there is a little bit more here to look at. I just want to clear this place up a little bit first. Three messages over here. Long ago, the apostle lived here. He studied the heavens and was worried. He left this place for the haven, which was mentioned earlier as well. But if we go over here to this purple mana, there is also a message right there. You might barely be able to see it at the top there. Uh, it is an optional one, you do not need to get this, but if we try that again, <laughs> if we rocket jump up here, you'll see the message and it just says, well played, which is incidentally what the text says as well, so very good, <laughs> very hidden, very important, ultimately inconsequential, but it's nice that it's there, you know. Over here, there should be some more vine creatures as well, I think if I walk a little forward, yeah, there we go. I like using that weapon against it because it makes a very satisfying sound when they all die at the same time. The big golems definitely do not die to the purple in one hit usually, so just keep that in mind. But with that done, there should be a couple heads coming down. A long time ago, I had... Uh, I missed an enemy in this place one. It was just a head that didn't come down immediately. So I wonder if there's some angles that you can hit where they don't quite come out or something like that. Not sure. But let's press this, another rock switch. This is just how they built things back then. They built plenty of switches to drop cubes <laughs> into the floor. And uh, with that button pressed, we can go further down. We have soul power actually, which might be cool because uh, we're about to enter the water here. Uh, there is a way to get back from this place. You can press this switch and it'll take you back to this room with the hallway and the big golem and whatnot. But with soul power, let's see if we can make this work with uh, axe action, because it's rare that we get to use this underwater. Uh, and let's see if we can just destroy all of these enemies by just going back and forth like this. <laughs> it's a fun way to deal with problems. And while it's still active, let's destroy the acid plant as well. There we go. With that though, let's go back a little bit, because we did just swim past a secret area. Because there is a switch right there. Pressing that switch opens a door to some full orange mana, which is always a good time. I wonder, hmm, I wonder if you would be able to get full purple mana on this map as well. I genuinely don't know. I don't really care that much, but it's. I, I wouldn't be surprised, I suppose, is more the thing. With that, though, I'm going to press this switch, and once again, we're just going to shoot one of these. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds so good. I, I could do that all day. It's uh, it's a good time when you just destroy like a hundred of them in one hit, one hit. Very much appreciated. Couple of vine creatures, but because we got full orange mana here just a second ago anyway, we might as well just go all out, you know? <laughs> Very nice. Over here, if we jump close to this wall, this should spawn some golems up ahead. Just makes this next... Uh, Jumping puzzle a little bit easier to get those out of the way quickly. There is also one enemy, which I don't think ever actually comes down, which is right there. Don't know why, but he's always just kind of stuck there. And uh, never seems to actually come down no matter what I try. 
This switch right here will create a bridge. This switch right here will create a bridge. This is a timed jumping puzzle. It is a lot easier if you just use one planet to jump to the other side. But it is uh, very possible for sure. Uh, one more instance of enemies. I no longer have purple mana because I wasted it all on vines, but that's fine. <laughs> Watch out for the rock that he throws. It is quite large. And then a couple more enemies right here. And that should be it. Uh, we are missing an enemy. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> we are missing one enemy. Uh, and that can be a problem because truth be told, I don't know where he is. Uh, there is a decent chance it's just someone that fell into the water. Because that does happen on occasion. But there is also a decent chance uh, that we are just going to cheat. <laughs> Uh, and try to find that last enemy that way because uh, genuinely he could be anywhere. Like, I, uh, is there one particular place where it didn't? I hear him. Did he fall down here? No. Here maybe. Oh right, this enemy. I don't get this one. This one occasionally is just down here. <laughs> uh, he's like way back, and then. He's just walking in a place that you're never actually going to return to. I suppose if you jump down there, then that one might catch you off guard. But that's really the only thing I can think of. But very strange. It's, it's, it happens consistently as well, which uh, is why I didn't even write it down in my notes. Because it, it always happens. I just forgot about it. Oh, well. Means we got everything and means we can move on. Very nice. I do like that level. I just really like using the Celestial Claw, which is why I like you this episode so much, because you really get a lot of purposes to use the Celestial Claw in this episode, and it's just really nice. Anyway, onwards to Mission 3 of Episode 3. The Pilgrim's Temple, and this is where we're going to run into an amusing thing, but ultimately a little bit of a nuisance. First, though, we are just going to go to this side here to grab... A weapon. There is going to be some golems here, but we have an axe. And that should hopefully be enough. Uh, we took a lot of damage there. <laughs> so, you know what? I'm going to switch it up a little bit. And just use this instead. There we go. I like having green mana available for the next section. So that's why I like using the axe for this. Because right now we only have 16 and we use up 2 per shot. So it does run out fairly quickly, but... And we did get all of our health back from those pickups ultimately, so it doesn't matter too much, I suppose. Either way. Over here, a message. The Pilgrim's Temple lies ahead. And some more green mana, which is wonderful. Makes uh, killing these next couple of enemies a little bit easier, because there is going to be even more golems. Occasionally, these do stagger, I promise you. <laughs> which is why using the axe generally works quite well. Because you end up just destroying a whole bunch of them while they're stunned there. But if another one throws rocks at you at the same time, that is a bit of a nuisance ultimately. There we go. I think that's about it. One weapon waiting for us over here in this inconspicuous, uh, inconspicuous rock creature. But there's actually two. The left one actually blends in with the wall so well. Uh, it's, it can actually be a bit of a problem. <laughs> but... Before you know it. I don't know why that one projectile flew a million miles into the sky, but I'm just not going to worry about it too much. Over here, you cannot jump through this, but that, I'm pointing it out specifically for a potential jump later. It depends on if I can do it, because it's uh, a little odd. Pick up the Volt Ride, some more Golems. You got plenty of green mana for this section now, so that's wonderful. A couple more of these heads, though, which we're just going to destroy like this. Two messages. This one says the only one who worships may only one who worships may enter. This one says the same, but they do count for two individual messages. And let's destroy these plants right here. As you can see, quite tanky. This one's on top of a strange protruding rock. We'll get into what that means in just a second. Uh, this uh, says prayer grounds. No concerns of mine. And over here some health and over here is a pot and this pot or either of these pots if you jump into it weirdly enough uh you'll either take damage or how can i do this 
Uh, or am I just gonna edit this in later? I'm just gonna edit this in later. If you jump <laughs> into this plant, uh, weirdly enough, you end up on top of this platform, and uh, you can just skip a whole section of the level here, but unfortunately, the jump is a little tricky, and I do not know how to do it consistently, so uh, we won't. But it's there. It's a thing you can do. It, uh, For speedrun purposes, it's good. For the purposes of surviving this place, it's a little worse. There was a switch over there, which I just pressed. Uh, mostly I say for surviving purposes less good is because there is going to be a full health pickup a little bit later in this section. That's just nice to get, isn't it? Couple more vines, but no worries. The silver key is right here, which we needed for that big door. Which will ultimately take us to the next area as well. But, the moment you pick up the silver key, the door closes behind you and a whole bunch of enemies start attacking you. A little bit scary, but nothing we can't handle, fortunately, because... We have the forces of water against the forces of fire, and of course that works fairly well. I'm trying to avoid getting soul power here, which this might be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because there is some enemies coming up, uh, which I... Oh, I don't have a celestial claw. Uh, right. <laughs> a little confused about where I am right now, no worries though. Over there is the full mana pickup. And up here is a couple of enemies that sometimes one of them comes down. Let's see if we can make that happen. I don't know what specifically makes these fall down. I have seen one of them come down once. I'm sh Yeah, like occasionally. If you just sort of wiggle here weirdly enough. They do come out. I just, uh, well, at least one of them does. <laughs> uh, but the other one, I don't know. Maybe, there, maybe there's a way, but I'm not aware of it. Shooting him, though, does end up killing him, so that's nice. Uh, press the silver key switch to move on. There is going to be the silver key door here. And yeah, you'd just be on the other side of this. Couple of flame creatures here, which we're just going to shoot from a distance before picking up that celestial claw. Ah, there's some heads. <laughs> there's some heads that I definitely didn't forget about. They took away most of my health. So fortunately... Uh, that's not a problem. <laughs> they, I think they come out when you leave the silver key area, so that's uh, that was a mistake on my part there, but fair enough, I suppose. If we pick up the Celestial Claw, if you do it right, you can jump off of one of those falling bridge parts, and you end up jumping just a million miles into the sky for some reason. Uh, it's a neat little jump. It doesn't really add anything to anything, but it's just a neat little thing you can do, ultimately. There is a bunch of fish in the water here, uh, which we're going to destroy for the purposes of getting into this area. We're going to swim up. We're going to grab the mana boost, which I am very happy about because my mana on many weapons was running fairly low. And a little bit more health since we took an insurmountable amount of damage to some heads. <laughs> there is also one surprisingly non-optional message over here, which requires a little bit of awkward jumping around these walls right here. Definitely not impossible, but it just says, how the hell did I get here? And then the text says something like, uh, oh man, really? Not happy. <laughs> I don't know what this plus is. It might be a question mark, but... It might also just be a plus, I genuinely have no idea. Some characters, there's just not enough references to actually translate them fully, and uh, you'll just have to wing it a little bit. But let's move on. I don't know when I want to get soul power. <laughs> we do have the Celestial Claw now, though. Uh, so we can destroy these golems with a little bit more ease, which is wonderful. Over here, the Pilgrim's story begins. A tale foreshadowing the dark times. And that is indeed true. Over here we can also see the ribbons, but it is hidden away for us for now. So we're just going to move on, destroy a couple more golems. And here starts the pilgrim's path, craving to learn the pilgrim start of this journey to the sacred worlds. Which uh, we did hear about a little bit earlier of someone else doing that in a previous message. There's the earth again. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Maybe you just kill them at the right time. It ends up just dropping their projector all the way into the sky. So I'm going to make a quick save here. Uh, there we go. And show off what I mean with the one tedious thing about the stone heads. 
which should be possible right here. There is a stone head like right up here. My kill count currently is 55. If I kill this one and he doesn't actually hit a wall, it ends up not increasing your kill count. And uh, it's fun to see them fly away a million miles, but it's a little unfortunate that it means that you can no longer get all the kills anymore uh, because you ended up killing him wrong. <laughs> so uh, we're going to try to avoid that from happening by just using a different weapon here. Uh, this should work well enough, honestly. You can also just use the uh, planets as well. It honestly works fairly well. They just explode. But it's one of the few enemies that doesn't explode or something like that when you kill them with the Star of Torment, uh, which I'm... I think I just called the Celestial Claw again. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> uh, but don't worry about it. Let's just shoot some more things into these plants right here. And read the next chapter of the Pilgrim's story. In the Sun Realm, he detained... He detained the... Did he detain it? Alright, yeah, sure. He... Ob Obtained. There we go. This is a difficult font. <laughs> he obtained the teaching of the light. However, he could not see the darkness arising from underneath. Yeah, the taint seems strange there in terms of word choices. So that's why I was like, eh, that doesn't seem right. Anyway, this is actually not a terrible place to have soul power thinking about it. Because there is a lot of golems, a lot of these um, acid plans and things. And I don't hate just being able to just sword through all of them like this. And I guess that's why there's usually a legendary soul here. Uh, to do specifically that with. <laughs> so that all ended up working out just fine. There's a couple golems still alive. But yeah, that were actually, yeah, just uh, don't have soul power for the longest time and then accidentally have it in the right spot. That's actually not a terrible strategy. There is also some purple mana over here. So we're just gonna grab all of that because it's always good to have. And uh, yeah, I'll just leave that legendary soul here for now before we uh, go on to the next area, that's for sure. Grab all of that. Everything we could possibly want is in here. There is going to be a bit button right up top here. There is going to be another one on the other side and some fish in the middle. Which we can still very easily dispose of with our water balls. No concerns whatsoever. There's some blue mana down there as well if you so desire, but I do not. So instead we're just going to move on. All the way to the other side of this water sequence where there is some more fish waiting for us. Should I get one to attack me? Like, how much damage does this do? Like, barely anything. <laughs> They're just little fish. They're just little guys. They just want to hang out. But unfortunately, uh, they, they count for enemies. <laughs> so unfortunately, we can't keep them alive. You understand. Anyway, we got the golden key. Uh, that spawns that, I guess. Let's just throw some more rockets at those. I guess using the upgraded Star of Torment actually does work fairly well against these as well, but that's okay. Let's grab the Legendary Soul and then just destroy a whole bunch of vine creatures instead. There is um, one health pickup up there, and you can't rocket jump to it. And I think that might be the only way to get to it, at least to my knowledge, because if you try to jump to it normally, you can not get pretty far by like doing this and... Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> but if you want, if you want it, there it is. It might do something. I'm genuinely not 100% sure, but it doesn't matter too much. We're gonna use our soul power here. I'm actually just gonna use the water one, I think. There's another legendary soul here. Oh my god. You may think I didn't prepare this very well, and that's because that's true. Uh, I, quite frankly, most of this I'm winging. I know where the secret areas are, and quite frankly, occasionally that's all you need. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's good. I guess I guess we can use soul power again. Is there anything I particularly want to use that on? Eh, we'll find out. Let's just uh, go along the journey and see if we come across anything that's particularly dangerous. Ah, you can really get a lot of it if you don't use it too quickly. <laughs> but I didn't expect to get three of them in a row like this. But yeah, fair enough. It does uh, it does work. This might be a, a thing though. Yeah, there we go. A couple of heads can take care of those fairly easily. In here, no risk of these things are not going to hit a wall, fortunately, as well. So that's nice. And one more. There we go. Purple mana waiting for us over here. This is also kind of a strange sequence. If you jump down here, uh, you end up in a place that you can actually reach in a different way as well. Um, 
And I'm gonna get into that in just a second. There is a secret area here as well. If you press that switch, you can jump down here into the water and get a whole bunch of mana for a variety of weapons. I think there is a full mana for one of the weapons as well. Yeah, right there. Full blue, I think. Yeah. Not too bad. It's actually kind of nice to have full blue mana at this point. Because I was running a little bit low uh, at the end of the day. But yeah, what I'm talking about is um, you can go through this little hole right here uh, to reach that part of the temple. And going through that hole actually spawns some heads. <laughs> and they don't spawn if you go through the path of uh, jumping down there. So it's, again, surprisingly easy to miss those enemies. Uh, also, that one went through this this thing, which I didn't expect to be possible. <laughs> so that startled me a little bit when he kept flying there, but no worries. Everything's okay. Everything's going fine. Uh, a couple of vine creatures here I missed as well. I basically, just uh, with the soul power, I just beeline to where we need to go. But there is actually a decent chunk of enemies that we haven't even seen yet here. Uh, should I just use the... I was gonna say, should I use the ribbons, but I don't actually have them yet, so that's uh, that'll stop that idea, I suppose. <laughs> well, that one also kind of spawned out of nowhere. I don't know if that was just a vine creature touching one of those fire pots or something, because that should also be able to um, make that happen, I suppose. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, uh, let's jump over here. There's some purple mana waiting for us, which is always nice to have. I think from here... Uh... <laughs> Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> that was not my best attempt. From here, you should be able to jump on top of this, right? And that should take you to another secret area. This is the one I thought I had already entered, because this one has the ribbons that we saw a little bit ago. So now we can look outside from here. A nice little view awaits us. And we can move on with ribbons in hand and a, quite frankly, disgustingly large amount of purple mana as well, so uh, we should be good. We should be good to go here without any real problems, so that is wonderful. I'm just very concerned I'm missing something because uh, as I'm just sort of uh, happily wading through this level, I'm, I'm barely thinking. <laughs> but it's probably fine. There's probably going to be some golems here or something, right? Yeah, there they are. Couple of golems, no worries at all. They can take care of those from a distance. The Pilgrim's Path. Uh, in the Moon Realm, he received the teachings of the night. However, he could not see depravity corrupting the doctrine. I hope I pronounced all those words correctly. Couple of bugs in the back there, but we're just gonna leave that area alone. Watch out for the remaining golems. I guess uh, it should be all of them, right? In the arcane expanse, he finally realized the corruption coming out of the void. However, it was too late. And there was actually a chapter called the arcane expanse as well, so that's, uh, that's good. Moving on, though. I really, I don't even know what I want to use these ribbons on, because most of the things are at golems, right? I mean, there's the big one, but that one doesn't really care about the ribbons that much. There we go. There is a secret area over here, which... Probably does actually fill up my purple mana. How is that one still alive? I shot like six planets out. <laughs> Very impressive, and I don't know what he was doing there. And we just blew up the earth again. It is a messy chapter indeed. But we're gonna go up. Uh, we are missing one secret. All right, that actually sounds accurate. So we should be good. <laughs> Let's just do some some ribbons in this direction. I'll probably do some good job. Really, any way to destroy these plants in one shot is probably worthwhile. But the remaining enemies, we might just use the ribbons on everything, I suppose. Again, how are you alive? Very surprising. His spirit twisted by the void in the Pilgrim Amir. Dust of dreams? Uh, I've got a little concerned about the sound of that right there, so I read that in a panic. But fortunately, it worked out. These mana pickups are also just quite strong. That's like 10 rockets in one gem, so that's very nice. His evil knowledge sustained the fallen pilgrim soul will never find peace. And that almost concludes the pilgrim's tale. There should be one more message. That was very much overkill, but that's okay. There is a head, like, right there. I think? It doesn't seem... Is it a head? He doesn't seem to care that I'm throwing 
oodles of attacks at him, but yeah, fair enough. Let's just do this. <laughs> Let's just not worry. There was a couple of heads in that room, and now there isn't. There is also a secret area right here with some more purple mana inside it, and that is the final secret area of the level. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no great way of going back up here, so we're just going to use a little planet to get back up and not be concerned about that stuff. I guess there's an acid plant over there, which we're going to have to deal with in a bit. And we got soul power, which hopefully isn't a problem. I think that should be fine, actually. Press this down here. It's just a couple of health pickups, fortunately. And I will probably be able to use this. Maybe I should use Voltride, see if that works out. I don't know if this works against these enemies even. Eh, it works fine. Alright. Very good. Against the head. Takes a little bit longer than I would maybe like, but... That's okay. Yeah, this is kind of a waste of soul power, I suppose. But it doesn't really matter too much because we have so much ammo left. Uh, maybe it's not that big of a waste if there's still two heads behind me. That was probably a pot. That's probably not an enemy. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> this is such a mess. Don't worry about it. We're just gonna keep going. On to where presumably an acid plant resides because it's been shooting at us the entire time. Can I do this? Probably. I killed one thing. It was an acid plant as well. Yeah, there's really no reason... God. <laughs> No real reason not to just use the ribbons on everything right now, but let's uh, let's switch it up a little bit at least and use the powered up Star of Torment because quite frankly that's just such a fun weapon to use. Because look at that nonsense right there. I don't know if you can get into similar situations where um, enemies end up uh, not dying because they're flying forever with this version of the weapon. Because it does shoot a little bit differently, that's for sure. Ah, well. We pressed the two switches. We can now open up the door over here. We can read this message which says, Those who follow the pilgrim's steps are doomed to face his reality. And uh, a little bit of foreshadowing in the actual text itself as well. And with that, let's press this switch. Go back down. And exit the level in a second. Hopefully we killed everything. That's a lot of golems. Uh, how, do, how well does this work? Three of them? Three shots? Not enough, really? Four shots isn't enough for one of them. <laughs> God. Absolute waste of ammo. And then there's like a million vine creatures here as well. And we're just gonna... Oh my god, miss everything. Wow. I wonder if that pierces. Maybe the attack doesn't actually pierce through enemies, and that's why only one of them got hit every single time there. Not sure. Either way, we got all the kills, we got all the secrets, we got all the messages. I'm actually very happy about that because... Yeah, because of the, the whole head situation, it's very easy to miss kills. Plus, there's all the enemies that you can just very easily miss as well, so... There's some stuff going on here. I don't really care for it too much, but we're just going to move on with all of the kills and secrets in hand. Also, occasionally the music bugs out here and it just keeps playing. <laughs> Not sure why, but it happens. Onwards to the final level of episode 3. Ancient Sanctuary. A couple of weapons here. If you're going for all destructibles, you're going to want to destroy all these pots now. I will not. You are being watched. I think you can actually avoid this message as well, so be careful of that. But when we walk out, closes behind us and we can no longer destroy the pots. Uh, there is a whole bunch of stuff here. The boss battle will not start until we are in the middle there. And I did that a little bit too quickly, so let's see how this is going to work out because I did not mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a couple weapons in the middle. Uh, this boss throws rocks at you the entire time. Uh, so, yeah, let's just wing it. Let's see if this works out, because honestly, we need to improvise here a little bit. Uh, this one, you just shoot. You can get soul power on lower difficulties for sure. Uh, but it's, for the most part, it's really just a matter of avoiding the attacks. If you try to hide behind things, he's just going to blow them up. Uh, except for some of them. <laughs> uh, but this is probably fine. Occasionally, you'll shoot 
uh, rocks at you that are kind of predicted shots as well, so be careful of that. Uh, and we're just gonna keep vibing through this. After a while, uh, we'll also turn some of these places into lava. So that only happens after he sustained a s significant amount of damage, but it's good to know about. But again, we're just gonna keep shooting like this for now. Uh, there is a full health pickup in this battle. There is also a secret area in this battle which can help out a lot. Uh, but for now, not really gonna worry about it. We're just gonna step on top of this top platform here and shoot a whole bunch of green mana at the boss. The rocks that he shoots drop souls when you destroy them. I'm fairly sure I mentioned that already, but just in case. And it is probably preferable to have the Celestial Claw that's next to him as well, but nah, it's probably fine. Ultimately, as long as you can just keep shooting him and not take too much damage, you're entirely fine. I believe in front of me is the full health pickup uh, if I drop down from here. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> uh, but I will drop down if I start taking too much damage or do that. That's an option. Occasionally, if you get hit by a rock, you do get flung a little bit, but it's a surprisingly low amount of damage, honestly. But yeah, you can see the full health pickup in the left side right there, so that's good. And we're just gonna keep trying to avoid this. If you just sort of dance around this top platform, there is lava there now. I'm obviously not gonna use the axe game. <laughs> this is not exactly an axable fight right here. I'm hoping this will be enough. If not, I might have to grab that Celestial Claw right there. Uh, but... Hopefully we can just dance our way through this with relative ease. I'm not really looking at my ammo at all because I'm fully focused on trying to survive. But hey, we did it! Good god. <laughs> so this entire arena is now just covered in lava everywhere. Uh, preferably, you do not step too close to that platform uh, before starting the fight. And it makes it significantly easier because you can really take your time to grab all the ammo in the world. Uh, it does take a while for this boss to die. It's honestly uh, probably one of my favorite bosses, genuinely. Uh, just because of how it works. But, like I mentioned, there is actually a secret area in here. Which I probably would have gone for. Uh, if it was getting particularly dicey. It is underneath that staircase right there. And it gives you... Invulnerability! <laughs> it's only for a little bit, but... Quite frankly, it does last for quite a while, and it'll probably keep you alive very well. So, certainly recommend it if you're struggling with this. Though, for the most part, honestly, if you can just keep dancing on that top platform with all the ammo in this arena, then you should be entirely good to go. Also, if you're not playing in warrior mode, you can just use soul power and almost skip the entire thing. So, <laughs> it's an, I, I do love that boss so much. It's very interesting. It, there's a lot of foreshadowing that the pilgrim spirit is getting corrupted and ultimately leading up to this boss fight of the, the corrupted spirit that's actually the pilgrim and stuff like that. I just think uh, the whole thing is just neat. This is a whole neat thing, and I like it. With that, though, we have completed episode three. I probably could have gotten the part-time had I just left <laughs> a little bit quicker. But unfortunately, I decided to talk about invulnerability and such, but it doesn't really matter too much at the end of the day. Because we lived. Welcome back, champion. And everything is quite pretty once again, and I do appreciate that. With that, though, we will just be going... Straight on to the next portal and end the video here. Next time we'll be going to the Solar Solstice. Which I am also very much looking forward to because look at that color scheme right there on the other side of this pyramid, uh, portal, not pyramid. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed it. Next time we play we'll be going into episode 4, the Solar Solstice. And I hope to see you all there. Bye bye. <laughs>